Since its launch, I've used an iPhone 15 Pro every single day. One for my personal life and one for work. And after 99 days, I kind of have mixed feelings about it. Let's get started. This is a bit overdone, but let's try to get over it super quick. What's changed from this year versus last year? The iPhone 15 Pro now has a titanium frame, but still has a textured glass back. The frame is super easy to get fingerprints on and makes it look dirty. But honestly, that's not really a big deal because you can just quickly wipe it away with the cloth. And you're more than likely going to have it in a case anyway. Even when you don't, it just gets kind of fingerprinty like older iPhones with the stainless steel frames, so no big deal. It has the new A17 Pro chip. You know how this goes every year. It's a faster, more better chip, but this is the first year that Apple introduced USB Type-C on the iPhone. It lets the iPhone do a lot more things that Android users have been enjoying for a long time now, like being able to use a USB-C dongle to plug into monitors, USB drives, external SSDs, and other accessories, and even all at the same time through a USB-C hub. So if specs are to be believed, this phone is better in almost every single way and it mostly is. The phone UI feels smooth in everyday usage. I haven't experienced a ton of glitching or a ton of apps closing randomly. Images taken from the camera look great, but let's face it, most high-end smartphone cameras out today look good too. But the thing that stood out to me was the performance on the phone. Not necessarily in a good or a bad way. I'm not much of a mobile gamer, but I do play Genshin Impact on my phone. And you know, you gotta grind those daily commissions for Primo gems. But the phone gets hot when you're running intense games like this. I know this game is constantly being updated with a bunch of new gameplay mechanics and maps and is more resource intensive now than it was a year ago or two. But the 15 Pro runs hotter than my 14 Pro did when running this game. And especially when you're recording videos from the camera. It's not burn your hands hot, but it is noticeably hotter and uncomfortable to hold for long periods of time. So what ends up happening is I lower the graphical settings on the game I'm playing so that it doesn't heat up as much, or I utilize a game pad so that I don't have to touch the body of the phone. But despite running hotter, battery life is a little better than my iPhone 14 Pro was. Also, for those people that are worried about wireless charging, I wirelessly charge to this phone 95% of the time. And so far, I'm still at 100% battery capacity, and that was what I experienced with my old 14 Pro as well, which was also primarily charged wirelessly. So just some anecdotal evidence for those that are worried about constantly wireless charging. They also replaced the mute switch with an action button this year. This action button can be changed to do a bunch of different things, including starting a voice memo, switching focus modes, and using it as a mute button like how it used to be. But it can also be set up to trigger shortcuts on your phone. To use the action button, you have to press and hold it to activate the action you assigned to it. I think this is so that you don't have accidental presses on it. But if you're the type of person that likes taking your phone out of your case for whatever reason, you might find that you accidentally trigger the action button just like how easy it was to trigger the mute switch on older iPhone models. But overall, I like the added functionality that the action button gives you compared to the old mute switch. But do you know what's just as customizable as the action button? This video's sponsor. Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals directly to your house. Basically, Factor helps you meal prep without the planning, shopping, and work that goes into preparing a meal. You can choose from over 35 different chef crafted meals that get sent to your door every week that cater specifically to your meal preferences, whether that be calorie smart, vegan and veggie, protein plus, or even gourmet plus. Gourmet Plus meals have nicer cuts of meat and premium produce like broccoli and broccolini to complement it. Soon, Factor will also offer options here that include shrimp, salmon, and steak, which all sounds really good right now. I'm kind of hungry, so let's make a Factor meal. I've really enjoyed this chipotle rubbed pork chop meal they sent over that includes roasted cabbage and red bell pepper fondue. And the selections don't have to be just for dinner. You can add on over 55 different options that give you breakfast, lunch, snacks, and drinks. I work from home and I'll admit that it's easy to forget to cook something and then I end up getting food delivered, eating junk from the pantry, or driving to a fast food joint. With Factor, I can just have a nice, fresh cooked meal in just two minutes and whenever I want it to, with no need to prep and no need to clean up. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code JimmyTries50 to get 50% off. And in case you missed what I just said, head over to factor75.com and use code JimmyTries50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. And thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this portion of the video.
The iPhone 15 Pro takes great photos, but thanks to the USB type C port, video is the one that stands out. It does heat up your phone if you're shooting videos, especially when using more intense formats like ProRes. Now, to be fair, if you're a typical user, you most likely won't use ProRes for your videos of your family's birthday or your dog running around or really ever have it on. It takes up a lot of storage space. It's really for professionals or hobbyists who really like to play with their video footage with color grading or video editing programs on their computers. And if you're not that, it doesn't really affect you as much. This iPhone is such a great video taking phone because with any kind of USB-C storage plugged in from SD cards, flash drives, and external SSDs, the iPhone 15 Pro can record ProRes footage directly to the external drive. The only problem I see with that is that saving directly to external storage only applies to ProRes video. So if you're taking pictures or taking non-ProRes videos, it saves it to the phone with no direct saving capability to your drive. But if you do want to move them to external devices, you have to manually select them in the Photos app and select the file path that you want to move them to. Not a big deal, but it does add some time and some level of inconvenience. Okay, I've saved this feature for last because it's obviously the biggest feature of the iPhone 15 lineup, and that's to change the USB Type-C for the charge port. It opens the door for a bunch of new accessories to be used with the iPhone and makes it a lot easier to switch between an iPhone and an Android device because most of the USB Type-C cables you own will work on the iPhone 15 Pro. But it also allows everyone to finally use one cable to charge all of your different devices. If you bought any non-Apple products with a battery in it within the last five years or so, it probably already uses USB Type-C. And now it's even more convenient to use cables and adapters we already have for other stuff too. That's not to say USB Type-C is perfect. It's not a perfect standard. There's lots of strange things about it, but it's a lot nicer than buying accessories that only work for my iPhone and nothing else. I also made an entire video on USB Type-C on the iPhone if you wanna hear more about that and all the different accessories available now. But to summarize, this is a huge feature and makes the iPhone way more versatile than it's been in the past. I'm just hoping that they open up the USB-C port to even more accessories like the way they do for their iPads. All right, so should you upgrade to an iPhone 15 Pro or iPhone 15 Pro Max? Well, let's be honest here. Smartphones as a whole are a mature product category now. The changes that happen year to year are so minor that trading in your phone and dishing out money for a minor bump in performance or minor bump in features is not a great use of money for most people. I mean, you could even try to use Apple's own comparison tool and see the differences aren't massive between the new device and the older ones. But that being said, if your phone is three years or older, all the changes that compounded to make the iPhone 15 Pro might be enticing enough to upgrade. Switching from an iPhone 12 Pro to this would be a huge difference, but I don't see a significant change in performance every day between the 15 Pro, my old 14 Pro, or even the 13 Pro that I kept before turning those in for these iPhone 15 Pros. Also, if you don't care about having a ProMotion display, only plan to use the USB-C port for charging, and don't care about 3X or 5X zoom, you might wanna consider the iPhone 15 or 15 Plus. Those could be had for a decent chunk less, but once you've grown used to devices, the Pro devices with ProMotion or 120 Hertz refresh rate displays, it's really hard to go back from that. If you're not adjusted to 120 Hertz display, you might be better off paying a little less for the 60 Hertz displays on the iPhone 15 or iPhone 15 Plus. So I guess at this point, it's conclusion time. The iPhone 15 Pro does its job as a minor yearly update. Everything is a little better, but the inclusion of USB-C makes this phone much more versatile than last year's iPhone 15 Pro, even if that means Apple users will have to update some of their old lightning cables and accessories. There are some nice new pro video features, but most people aren't pro videographers or care about those features. But besides that, the photos that come out of this thing are a little nicer. Should you upgrade to the iPhone 15 Pro or any phone in the iPhone 15 lineup? I don't think we should be thinking of it as this is the one to upgrade to anymore. We should just be thinking about upgrading our devices when our current devices don't fit our needs anymore, regardless of how old your phone is. I'd say just keep your old phone until it's too slow, doesn't fit your needs or dies, then upgrade. Your wallet will thank you. Anyway, what do you personally think? Is the iPhone 15 Pro the one you upgraded to? How do you think it's held up? When it first launched, I remember a lot of people had some initial fears and posting about them on social media, but the 15 Pro lineup seems to be doing just fine now. When are you planning to get a new device? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you all next time. Bye.